For today's video, we are going to talk about how to represent inverse function through table of values and graphs and we are going to explain everything in details. The relationship between the table of values of a function and its inverse to get the x and y values of an inverse function interchange the x and y values of the original one-to-one -one function. That means the x value of the original function became the y value of its inverse function and the y value of the original function became the x value of its inverse function. And the relationship between the graph of a function and its inverse, always remember, the graph of the inverse function is the reflection of the graph of the original function, and the axis of symmetry is the line which is y equals to x. And these are the basic concepts that you need to remember in order for us to represent inverse functions through table of values and graphs. So let's start and let's have an example. On example number 1, graph f of x equals 2x plus 1 and its inverse. So to graph the given function, let us construct first a table of values. So let's have x and y and let's say the values of x are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we are going to use the values of x to find the values of y. So let's have x equals negative 2. So we are going to have f of negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2 plus 1. 2 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 and that is negative 3. So this will be the value of f of negative 2. Then let's have x equals negative 1. So let's have f of negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 plus 1. So we are going to have 2 times negative 1, that is negative 2, plus 1, and that is negative 1. So this will be the value of f of negative 1. And let's have x equals to 0. So we are going to have f of 0 equals 2 times 0 plus 1, and that is 1. So this will be the value of f of 0, that is 1. And then, let's have x equals to 1. So let's have f of 1 equals 2 times 1 plus 1. 2 multiplied by 1, that is 2 plus 1, and that is 3. So this will be the value of f of 1. And lastly, Let's have x equals to 2. We are going to have f of 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 and that is 5. So this will be the value of f of 2. So these are the set of ordered pairs in the given function that is negative 2 and negative 3, negative 1 and negative 1, 0, 1, 1 and 3, and 2 and 5. So before we plot the set of ordered pairs in a given function, let us find first the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function. So to find the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function, let us simply interchange x and y values of the original function. So that means the x values of the original function became the y values of its inverse function. And the y values of the original function became the x values of its inverse function. Let us construct another table of values for its inverse function. Let's have x and y. So the values of x are the values of y of the original function, and that is negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. And the values of y are the values of x in the original function, that is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So these are the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function. That is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, and 5, and 2. So if you are going to find the inverse of the given function, we are going to have f of x equals 2x plus 1. So let us have y equals 2x plus 1. Let us interchange x and y variables. 
let us have x equals 2y plus 1. And let us solve for y in terms of x. So we are going to move 1 on the side of x. It will give us x minus 1 equals 2y. Let us divide both sides by y. Or 2 rather. Let us cancel this one. So y equals x minus 1 all over 2. So the inverse of 2x plus 1, that is x minus 1 all over 2. So this will be the inverse of the given function. So let us grab the set of ordered pairs in the original function and its inverse. So in the original function, we have negative 2 and negative 3. So this will be negative 2 and negative 3. And then we have negative 1 and negative 1. And then we have 0, 1. And then we have 1 and 3. And we have 2 and 5. So let us connect the points. And the graph of its inverse, we have negative 3 and negative 2. So this is negative 3 and negative 2. And then we have negative 1, negative 1. And then we have 1, 0. And then we have 3, 1. So this is 2, 3. And then this is 1. And then we have 5 and 2. So again, let us connect the points. So as you can see, we have now the graph of the original function and its inverse. So to test whether the two graphs are inverses to one another, we have a line here that is y equals to x. So as you can see, the graph of the inverse function is the reflection of the graph of the original function. On example number 2, graph f of x equals cube root of x plus 1 and its inverse. So to graph the given function, let us construct first a table of values. So let us have x and y. And let's say the values of x are negative 9, negative 1, 0, and 7. And we are going to use the values of x to identify the values of y. So let's say if we have x equals negative 9. So we are going to have f of negative 9 equals cube root of negative 9 plus 1. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8 and the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So this will be the value of f of negative 9. And then let's have x equals negative 1. So let's have f of negative 1 equals cube root of negative 1 plus 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And the cube root of 0 is 0. So this will be the value of f of negative 1. And let's say x equals 0. So let us have f of 0 equals cube root of 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. And the cube root of 1 is one. So this will be the value of f of 0. And lastly, x equals 7. So f of 7 equals cube root of 7 plus 1, and that is 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So this will be the value of f of 7, that is 2. So these are the set of ordered pairs in the given function that is negative 9 and negative 2, negative 1 and 0, 0 and 1, and 7 and 2. So before we plot the set of ordered pairs, let us find first the set of ordered pairs of its inverse. So to find the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function, let us simply interchange x and y values of the original function. That means the x value of the original function became the y value of its inverse function. And the y value of the original function became the x value of its inverse function. 
So to identify the set of ordered pairs of the inverse function, let us construct another table of values. Let us have x and y. So the values of x are the values of y in the original function that is negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. And the values of y are the values of x in the original function that is negative 9, negative 1, 0, and 7. So these are the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function. That is negative 2 and negative 9, 0, negative 1, 1 and 0, and 2 and 7. And to find the inverse of the given function, let us have f of x equals cube root of x plus 1. So let us have y equals cube root of x plus 1. Let us interchange x and y variables. Let us have x equals cube root of y plus 1. And let us solve for y in terms of x. So let us have cube on both sides of the equation. We are going to have x cubed and we are going to cancel this one. It will give us y plus 1. Let us move 1 on the side of x cubed. It will give us y equals x cubed minus 1. So the inverse of cube root of x plus 1, that is x cubed minus 1. So this will be the inverse of the given function. So let us grab the set of ordered pairs in the original function and its inverse. In the original function, let us have negative 9 and negative 2. So this is negative 9 and this is negative 2. And then we have negative 1 and 0. And then we have 0 and 1. And then we have 7 and 2. So this is 7 and this is 2. So let us connect the points. And then let us have the graph of its inverse. Let us have negative 2 and 9. So this is negative 2 and this is negative 9. And then we have 0 and negative 1. And then we have 1 and 0. And then we have 2 and 7. And then let us connect the points. So now we have the graph of the original function and its inverse. And to test whether the two graphs are inverse as to one another, we are going to have a line which is y equals to x. So as you can see, the graph of the inverse function is a reflection of the graph of the original function. On our last example, graph f of x equals x squared and its inverse. So as you can see, the given example is not a one-to-one -one function because it fails on the horizontal line test and instead of having a parabola opens upward, we have to restrict our domain into x greater than or equal to zero. So to graph the given function, let us construct a table of values. Let us have x and y. And let's say the values of x is equal to zero, one, two, and three. And we are going to use the values of x to identify the values of y. So let's have x equals 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared, that is 0. So this will be the value of f of 0. And then x equals to 1. So f of 1 equals 1 squared, and that is 1. So this will be the value of f of 1. And then let's have x equals 2. So we have f of 2 equals 2 square and that is 4. So this will be the value of f of 2. And lastly, we have x equals 3. So let us have f of 3 equals 3 square and that is 9. So this will be the value of f of 3. 
So this will be the set of ordered pairs in the given function that is 0, 0, 1, and 1, 2, and 4, and 3, and 3. So before we plot this set of ordered pairs, let us find first the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function. So to find the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function, let us simply interchange x and y values of the original function. So that means the x value of the original function became the y value of its inverse function, and the y value of the original function became the x value of its inverse function. So let us construct another table of values in order for us to identify the set of ordered pairs of the inverse function. So let us have x and y. So the values of x are the values of y in the original function that is 0, 1, 4, and 3. And the values of y are the values of x in the original function that is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these are the set of ordered pairs of its inverse function that is 0, 0, 1, and 1, 4, and 2, and 3, and 3. And to find the inverse of the given function, let us have f of x equals x squared. We are going to have y equals x squared. Let us interchange x and y variables. It will give us x equals y squared. And to simplify, let us square both sides of the equation. We are going to have y equals square root of x. So the inverse of x squared, that is square root of x. So this will be the inverse of the given function. So let us grab the set of ordered pairs of the original function and its inverse. Since f of x equals x squared is not a one-to-one -one function because it fails on the horizontal line test, instead of having a parabola opens upward, we have to restrict our domain into x greater than or equal to 0. So to grab this one, let us have 0, 0, and then we have 1 and 1, and then we have 2 and 4, and 3 and 9. So let us connect the points starting from 0 and then the set of ordered pairs of its inverse that is 0, 0 and then 1 and 1 and then we have 4 and 2. So this is 4 and this is 2 and then we have 9 and 3. So let us connect the points. So now we have the graph of the original function and its inverse. And to test whether the two graphs are inverse as to one another, we are going to have a line which is y equals to x. So as you can see, the graph of the inverse function is a reflection on the graph of the original function. And this will be the graph of the original function and its inverse. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.